Hey, it's Ken Gagney with YouTube channel GameBits with something a little bit different today. We're playing an iOS game called Cloudbreaker. It's a puzzle game I first encountered at Boston Fig, the festival of indie games back in September 2013. And the developer, Axis Savage, has provided me with an advanced copy before its release on Tuesday, March 4th for iOS. Let's go through the tutorial. So it is a color matching game, slide blocks to rearrange, and this is not a demonstration the tutorial. It's actually interactive where they are asking me to slide the blocks. So they want me to match up the colors and as soon as one pair disappears the others rearrange themselves to be next to each other to fill in the gaps and they disappear. Link all blocks of the same color. So it's not two in a row or three in a row, it's all in a row. So you'll notice I can put these two yellow pieces together. Nothing happens. It's the orange pieces that disappear when they get together. There are other ways I could have solved that puzzle as well. So for example, on this one, doing this won't do much of anything. Or it does, actually, because the pieces seem to have an unusual physics that I don't quite understand. They just sort of seem to rearrange themselves. But as long as you get all the colors in a row, and if there's only one color left, then naturally everything else will rearrange and disappear, because there's nothing to get in their way. Clear this level in one move to get a bonus time block. So you can see if you get the orange one in the middle out of the way, the yellows will join and disappear, leaving nothing but the oranges. So let's do that. Boink. Dink. Shulp. Time is cumulative. It carries over from one level to the next, so you want to get each level done as quickly as possible to leave yourself enough time to do the next level. And that was simply the tutorial. From there, it does not dump you back into the menu. It puts you right into the game. So here we are in World 1-1. One, one. Now with puzzle games, the graphics don't need to be out of this world. The focus is on the gameplay, and I would certainly say that's effective here. I like the little background of other Tetrad-like pieces floating by. You don't get to see them for very long, though. Whoop, there we go. Oh, no, maybe not. Oh, ah, mm, ah, ah, there we go. And again, I'm not quite sure I understand how the pieces are rearranging themselves, what the laws are, so it makes it hard a little bit for me to predict what the cascades will be. But I seem to be doing okay. I've played this game a few times now, and I think I'm getting the hang of it. I just uh, rearrange pieces, see what happens, then rearrange them some more. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Might not... Oh, time's up. 1-9. That's not my best score ever. So at that point, we're dumped back to the menu. I want to show you a couple of other things that we have going on here. We have options. Now you'll notice this is a color-based game. If you are blind to certain aspects of the color schemes, then there are other ones out there, like this. There are no shape options, however, and I can't necessarily say uh, how well these different color schemes work with different kinds of color blindness, but I assume that one of the three will work for you. I'm going to use the default. You can turn the sound off, which also turns the music off. You can turn just the music off, so you have just the sound effects. And Game Center, which is where you upload all your scores. Uh, speaking of scores, if I go back here and take a look at my scores, well, I am one of the top-ranked players in the world of this game because it isn't out yet, and not many people have played it. So I am pretty happy to know that for this short window of time, I am one of the best players of this game in the entire world. I don't expect that it will last. Uh, let's see, stage bonuses. And these are sort of like achievements. If you finish the level quickly enough, they'll give you extra time for the next time you play the game, or the next time you start off at a certain level. There, let's see, is a store where you can buy retries. So this lets you start back off on the stage you ended on. There is no stage select in this game, but you can pick up where you left off immediately after you die by using one of these continues. It comes with three continues. I've already used one of them. And you can buy one more for a dollar or five more for three dollars. Now you're also limited in how often you can buy or rather play the game at first. It's only a certain number of plays every half hour or so. However, that is because the game comes free. You can download this for iOS at absolutely no charge and play it a certain number of times every half hour. If you want to remove that limit, then it's $3. And actually, that's pretty fair. Most puzzle games 
aren't free for iOS. If you want to play them, you have to buy them up front. Or you have to download a demo version and then download a, a paid version like Angry Birds. This game you can play as much as you want to a limit of, say, once an hour or once a half an hour for free. <coughs> uh, the retries I'm not too crazy about. I like knowing that I'm picking up a game where I left off and seeing some progress so that I can actually tell I'm getting better. But you can also see I'm getting better just from how far I get in each play. So, with any luck, I'll get past 1-9 this time. Also, I don't think that's the exact same level 1-1 one, one that I played last time. I don't think it's predefined what the levels are. I think there's some randomness to this. I don't know if it's choosing them from a predefined set. Oh. Or if they actually are randomly generated. Hmm. Let's see, that was not my fastest level ever. Took a few too many moves there. That one went better. I have not yet played this enough to develop a strategy for it. But I'm already up to 1-9, which is where I ended last time. So that's pretty good, I think. And there we go, stage 1 cleared. 20 time used, 5 bonuses earned. I'm not exactly sure what the bonuses are. I can see I got 3 out of 10 stars. And I'm not quite sure how I earned the bonuses. Maybe if I go back to those achievements that I listed earlier. But anyway, now we can continue on to stage two. And try this one. Easy enough. I usually go for the low-hanging fruit at first and see if that causes any cascades that makes the rest of the level easier. Uh, what is the low-hanging fruit here? Probably wasn't that. You can make some uh, very tortuous rearrangements if you want, and uh, not usually in your best interest to do so. Let's see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There. Let's see. Ah! I thought that one would be harder. Oh no! Ah! I have like two seconds left to finish this. Ah, time's up. I reached 2-9. I've reached 3-2 before. And now it says, do I want to retry that stage? I can, if I was on stage three, I can scroll back to stage two. I can choose any stage I have passed through before and play it again. So you can see I have two retries here. And in the upper right corner, that little icon, the Tetrad-like icon with the times one, that's how many more times I can play during my current time limit. So I'm going to use one of my rare, precious retries. And you can see that it used not only a retry, but also the number of times I can play in an hour. Because that little icon in the upper right decremented as well. Uh, I will double check that though when this game is over. Oh. Yeah, I could definitely be better at this. That one went well, though. Again, I like it when it just sort of rearranges itself and finishes the level for me. I feel like, oh, yeah, I meant that to happen. I'm smarter than I look. But not that time. I actually did worse that time. I only made it 2-6. Okay, so I do have one more play in the upper right-hand corner, as you can see. And if I want to buy more, I go to the store, buy games, and there. 13 minutes until the next game. So let me show you the credits and I will end my little let's play there. And what I like about the credits is that it actually is playable. You can uh, make the credits disappear by matching up the colors. And there's no time limit here so this is sort of a low stress way to just play around with moving blocks and see if you can understand the physics. However, as you can see from here, some of the levels are quite difficult. And this also demonstrates one aspect of the game. You can make some very long rows here. Oop, trying to... Hmm. There we go. Now this game is being played on my iPod Touch. And the game does not support landscape mode, so when I rotate my iPod, it doesn't do anything. And on a level that's this wide, that's sort of an issue, because these tiles are becoming very small and very hard for me to 
grab. And it also explains the letterboxing that you see on the left and right side of the screen right now. That is just an artifact of YouTube. Now again, you saw me dragging some of these pieces, and I'm not sure I understand the physics, because if I drag them all the way down here, then they float all the way to the left. So it's some sort of inertia, like, it's like Super Mario Galaxy, I guess, where the larger something is, the more it gravitates toward it. And right now I'm just trying to get the pieces closer together so that the screen gets smaller so I can see everything. Sometimes the pieces seem to gravitate toward each other based on similar colors. Not quite sure, though. Let's see. Oh, yay. Of course, it's hard to tell who their, the credits were to begin with, because I've rearranged them so much. Aw, oh, Mom and Dad. Everything is both thanks to them and their fault. I like that I said that Mom and Dad were their biggest critic. My Mom and Dad wouldn't know how to play an iOS game. Well, that's not true. Mom plays Angry Birds. And I wish Dad would play this game. I forget what's the name of it. It's like Sea Shard or something. But it's just like Tetris Attack. My dad loves Tetris Attack. But he won't play the iOS version of it. I don't know why. It's not officially iOS, of course. Nintendo doesn't make iOS games. Whoop. Almost done there. Great. Testers continued. I wonder how he recruited. There will be a link to this game, both in the iOS store and the developer's website, which I believe is Button Brigade in the show notes for this YouTube video. So you can find it there if you want to download and play the game. Almost done the testers here. There, got rid of all the purple. Let's do the orange next. There, and that does the rest. Thanks for playing. And yet I'm still playing. How meta. And let's do that. There. I don't get a record for my tutorial score, but oh well. So that's Cloudbreaker. Thank you for watching this Let's Play of Cloudbreaker for iOS by Axis Savitz. Axis Civitz, I'm sorry. And if you want to check it out, again, there will be a link in the show notes. And if you want to see more games coming up from YouTube channel GameBits, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.